It was a really intimate experience. There were only 5,000 people there. It was our first time playing Madison Square Garden, which is, you know... We were a hit. Yeah. <laughs> Always a dream. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was so awesome to show so much of the movie and have it be incredibly well received by the audience. You know, this is obviously a, a, a very receptive, Spider-Man friendly audience. But if you don't do Spider-Man right, they can turn on you in a minute. And I think that's they, why we had extra security. That's there, right. You just never in know. case. Uh, but it was so great uh, to see how everyone really responded really well to the first 35 minutes that we showed, and and to see everyone like get all of the love that was put into it. So it was cool. We always felt like the magic of this character is that anyone can be behind that mask. And why the reason we fell in love with the Miles Morales from the comics is that um, Brian Bendis put a completely new character back there. And he's from Brooklyn, he's got a strong family, um, he's a little bit younger. So we just thought that it was a great way to kind of remix the Spider-Man story. and and tell it from a different point of view. One cool thing is that the type of spider that bit Miles is uh, a little bit different than the one that bit Peter. So he, in addition to uh, being able to stick to things and spider sense and all the things you know from um, Peter Parker Spider-Man, he also has uh, what's known as a venom blast, which is electricity that, that can spark out of his hands. Um, and he also has a camouflage power, which allows him to turn, uh, for all intents and purposes, invisible. So, like being able to play with that stuff in the movie, also, and 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 bring new ideas to that, uh, was really fun because it really opened it up. One cool thing about Spider-Man is that when you put on that mask, no one knows what you look like. Uh, no one knows, uh, and it could be anybody. And so. This movie, not only with, with Miles and Peter, but also with Gwen and all the other characters that get introduced, uh, you know, it feels like anybody, whether you're a human or a pig, can, can look at the screen and go like, I see myself there and I can imagine myself in this scenario. And it's true for, you know, for everybody. And so it, it feels really exciting to, to send a message to the world that like, the thing that is different about you, uh, it can be your superpower. Spider-Man's always punching up, right? And, and uh, so he's always been an underdog. And I think that the, the, the reason that character is powerful is because we all feel like young kids just trying to figure out how to fight our demons. And Spider-Man's foes are always, you know, it's like your girlfriend's dad <laughs> or your scary teacher. But now they're like a giant monster. And I think that's what, what makes the character so resonant is because we, we all feel like we've got to fight these big things and we don't know if we've got what it takes. As filmmakers, it's really fun to um, give the audience a surprise. And so knowing that we had this like deck of cards full of characters from all across the Spider-Verse that we could lay down anytime we felt like it was right. That was a, a real uh, privilege for us. So um, we, we always wanted to design it so that the, that the characters slowly came into the picture, that you like really focused on Miles from the start. And then slowly we would feather in these other people so that you feel like, just like Miles, your world is getting bigger and bigger and bigger as the movie grows. And so you've got Gwen, who is uh, young like Miles, but has been Spider-Woman for a couple of years. So she's you know, got it down where Miles is still new to, new to the game. And so she's, she brings a little bit of experience and edge and she's a whole lot of fun. Um, you got Spider-Man Noir, who is uh, a lot of people's favorite because He's like a 30s uh, like noir detective in black and white. Penny Parker, who uh, you know has a uh, a robot with a with a spider inside of it named SPDR, and the two of them have a psychic connection. Because why not, right? That makes yeah. Uh, I guess each member of the Spider Verse like it just gets weirder and weirder. Yes, yes. And Their origin stories yes. get progressively stranger. Yes. Right. Penny Parker 
is her father created a robot yeah. that is has a spider inside of it. Yes. And Penny and the spider share a psychic connection. That's correct. Which makes perfect sense. Right. Then of course there's that old story you've seen on movies a million times. And then of course there's Spider Ham who as it turns out, we discovered while we were working on the script that he wasn't bitten by a radioactive spider. In fact, he was a spider who was bitten by a radioactive pig, and the pig was a pig version of Aunt May. <laughs> and we were forced to tell that story in under five seconds. <laughs> well, the thing is that we, I, I was trying to find, I have an old spider hand comic from when I was a kid. I was trying to find it, but I could not. It's like find the spect porkular spider exactly. Peter, yeah. Peter Porker, um, but he uh, is very funny, and John Mulaney is. It's delight. A delight. The fact that these characters are meeting for the first time, and that they're. Um, they're people who are loners who haven't found their tribe and they find it in one another is I think the most powerful thing about this movie um, that no other Spider-Man can really do. Yeah, and I think the other thing is um, this really unique visual style is something that um, has never been done before and animation is such a perfect medium to do that and, um, and this movie's really pushed the boundaries of what's just technically possible um, uh, in order to make it feel like every frame is a painting. And uh, the people at Imageworks did an amazing job, and, and Justin and the whole production design team um, are such talented artists, and their love and, and, and talent and passion shows in every frame of this thing. And remember, nobody knew what this movie was going to look like a, a year ago. <laughs> we just sort of were guessing that we could pull it off, but we weren't sure. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. <laughs> uh, and so the slowly over the last year or so, as we've been f seeing finished footage come through, we've finally figured out how to make the movie look like how we wanted it to. We wanted to elevate um, the, the way action storytelling is told on film sometimes. Because of animation, we can make them move as quickly and, uh, and, and boisterously as we want. Um, we have an amazing animation team that sat in front of their computers with mirrors like do doing this <laughs> and like trying to figure out the perfect pose. And um, they spent a lot of time looking at you know, skateboard videos and surf videos mm -hmm. and acrobats and stuff to try to find the right reference. Um, so the, these characters have a really special way of moving and you can feel it on the screen. We have all of these spider people, so obviously there need to be a number of characters for them to fight, so uh, that's a whole, a whole new takes on a bunch of villains that, that people know. Uh, and so being able to try and tell a story where a bunch of characters are fighting a bunch of other characters, but you can still tell what's going on and understand what the goal of the scene is, and everything is really clear, and the geography is clear. is a real challenge, but luckily there are a lot of really talented people um, that work really hard to make it not just something that makes sense, but something that feels really cool. We always wanted the movie to sound as different as it looks and we wanted the soundtrack to reflect like what Miles might be listening to and and so it's got a lot of different Brooklyn influences new school old school um, and then of course each of our characters has their own musical signature so in addition to that Gwen is in a band <laughs> and so she's got her own vibe um, you know uh, Needless to say, Spider Ham has a, a has his own, <laughs> has has his own, own sound system. system. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, yeah, it feels like unusual for an animated film to have a contemporary um, like soundtrack that feels New York and feels fresh and feels now. You know, it's a it's an unusual thing, and I think it's really cool that everybody's leaned into it, and and the soundtrack is really cool, and also the score.
Uh, the score's like beautiful. Daniel Pemberton fits in with that same mood. It's it's orchestral, but it's also contemporary and, and fresh. The mission was how do, can this film sound different? You know, mm -hmm. how can its uniqueness reflect the uniqueness of all of these characters? You know, I'm the you will not find a bigger fan of Randy Newman. I love Randy Newman. I've memorized those songs. But when we set out to figure out how this movie sounds, we said, what is the opposite of that? Because we, you know, a movie like this needs to, you know, plant a flag in the ground. The problematic thing about superheroes is it can tell you that someone else is going to come and save you. And I think the neat thing about having a movie with a bunch of spider people in it is you understand that, um, it's, that it democratizes the superhero thing. That it can happen to any of us, right? It just like, it, it, that, that every, everybody in your life might be putting on that mask in the evening. I want young people to understand that it's up to them, that it, they cannot wait to be chosen, and that it's not a birthright. We all have to choose to be heroic in whatever way is unique to us, and that's ultimately what Miles figures out. Right, and I think it really, it, it connects to me personally to feel like you've got something different about you, and that's what makes you you, and then that can be the thing that is your greatest asset, that can be the thing that you can use uh, to help the world.